We've been receiving emails and phone calls from numerous pet parents like yourselves regarding the recent outbreak of RHDV2 in a couple of southern states. This includes Arizona, New Mexico, and most recently also Texas. Unfortunately, this outbreak has not only affected domesticated rabbits, but there's also been confirmation of positive cases in some of our native species, including cottontails and jackrabbits. We have been in close and constant communication with some of the key stakeholders associated with the recent outbreaks, including local veterinarians and the states, to gather as much information as we possibly can, and we'll be sharing that information as soon as we have it all together. So one of the more common questions that we've been getting here at Oxbow is what is the difference between RHDV1 and RHDV2? Now the first variant has been around since the early 80s and first made its way to the United States around 2000. RHDV2, which is the variant associated with the current outbreak, was first identified in France right around 2010 and first showed up in North America associated with an outbreak in 2018 in the Vancouver area. These two diseases obviously both have significant impact on rabbit populations, but unfortunately one key differentiator that makes RHDV2 more of a concern is that not only does it affect domesticated rabbits, but it's also been shown to affect our native species like cottontails and jackrabbits. So how is RHDV2 spread? The most common way is through direct contact from an infected animal and a non-infected animal. This is through any type of excretion or, or potentially blood. There is also the potential that the virus can be spread by things that are in the environment, whether that be bedding or caging or anything that the infected animal has potentially come in contact with. It's also important to be aware that even us as human beings through our shoes and through our clothing can and potentially transmit the virus from an infected animal to a non-infected animal. So where have cases of RHDV2 been confirmed here in North America? Well, the first confirmed case was actually in 2018 associated with an outbreak near Vancouver, British Columbia. Since that point in time, there have been confirmations of cases in Ohio, in New York City, and also in Pennsylvania. And the most recent outbreak that many of us are aware of and most concerned about has occurred in the last month or two, not only in Texas, Arizona, but also New Mexico. Another common question that we've been getting a lot from concerned pet parents, and a very appropriate question, is that is there a vaccination against this horrible disease? There is a vaccination that's actually been available in Europe where this is a much more endemic issue for a fairly long period of time. Currently, that vaccine is not approved to be imported into the United States. Now, there are numerous key stakeholders associated with these recent outbreaks and veterinarians that are evaluating the process of potentially bringing that vaccination into the United States. That all being said, I think it's really important for most pet owners to understand if you don't live in an environment where there is an ongoing issue, the overall risk to your pet is extremely low. While vaccinations can be extremely advantageous and a very important tool in terms of preventing disease, there are also risks associated with vaccinations. If you have additional questions specifically to your rabbit in this vaccination, I would strongly suggest that you talk with your veterinarian for consi before considering making any decisions. I want to first of all reiterate that for most of you, the overall risk for your actual munchkins is really, really low. We know that the current outbreak is isolated to a few select counties and a few select states, and there are numerous entities taking huge efforts and huge investments to try to control that. So keep that in mind before you jump to any conclusions. That being said, there are certainly easy and effective things that we can do as pet parents to minimize the risk. First and foremost, use good basic hygiene. Before and after you handle your bunny, wash your hands, the same thing that you would typically do. Be aware of any potential interactions with bunnies that you are not familiar with, whether that's you spending time with your rabbit outside, which should always be supervised, whether that's doing buddy visits where you're having interactions with other bunnies. If you do not know that animal and specifically where they've been, there's really no legitimate reason to take that risk. 
be really thoughtful associated with the products that you're bringing into your environment, whether that's new caging, whether that's new bedding, new materials to ensure that the quality and the safety is there. And if you can't validate where those products have come from, there is simply no reason to bring them into the environment. If you do have to bring a new rabbit into your environment, or if you're somebody who volunteers at a rescue or other organization, take those extra steps and precautions by changing your clothes when you get home, washing your hands, and doing those simple things before you interact with your animal. Those simple little precautionary measures can make a huge difference in terms of decreasing the risk to your little one if that is an issue. So how long do we have to worry about this virus in the environment? We know that the most commonly way that it is transmitted is through direct contact, but we do know that this virus does have some environmental stability. Most of the common research that's out there shows that under perfect environmental conditions, there is the potential for this virus to remain viable for up to three months. Now certainly as that time goes on or as environmental conditions change, the overall viability of the virus diminishes very, very quickly. So there is the potential the virus can survive in environmental conditions outside of the host, but the risk of that and the likelihood of that is really quite low. So should I be worried about my rabbit potentially getting the virus from hay that you are buying? The overall risk of the hay you're purchasing carrying the virus to your animal is extremely low. While we do know that this virus can be transmitted through fomites, which are non-living things, that would require the presence of an infected animal within the hay field, as well as very specific environmental conditions that would allow the virus to remain stable in the hay. That is an extremely unlikely situation. So what is Oxbow doing to ensure that the products that we are selling for your animals is as safe as it can possibly be? First and foremost, specifically to hay, all of the hay currently in the marketplace is from our 2019 growing year. We know with the recent outbreaks being in the last month or so that there is no potential risk associated with the hays that you are purchasing currently in the marketplace. Even though all current information points to the risk being extremely low, we will continue to take information as it is gathered and take every known precaution to prevent any risk. As we move into next year's hay growing season, we will also be evaluating the potential impact of where hay is grown and specifically where and how long it is stored to ensure that we're doing everything possible to eliminate the potential risk to your pets.